In the previous lecture, we derived an equation for the velocity of transverse waves as they travel through a chord. And we said that the formula for the velocity is given by the following equation. The velocity is equal to the square root of the tension inside our chord divided by our mu, which is the mass per unit length. Now notice the numerator of our fraction is known as the elastic factor and our denominator denominator is known as the inertia factor. So from this equation we see that the velocity of transverse waves when they travel inside a chord only depends on the type of chord that we are using. It depends on the type of medium that we are using. So now let's discuss the velocity of longitudinal waves in two cases. So case number one are longitudinal waves as they propagate inside a long solid rod. So the velocity of such a mechanical wave is given by the following equation. We take the square root of Young's modulus given by E divided by our density of that matter. So our rho is the density and this is our Young's modulus. So both of these factors depend on the type of medium, the type of long solid rod that we're using. For example, copper and steel solid rods will have different values for these two factors. So once again, the numerator of our fraction is the elastic factor and our denominator is our inertia factor. And once again, we see that just like for the transverse waves, longitudinal waves that propagate in a solid rod depend on the type of medium that we're using, the type of solid rod that we're using. Now, let's look at case number two. What about the velocity of longitudinal waves when they propagate through fluids such as gases and liquids. Well, as it turns out, the velocity of our longitudinal wave in fluids is given by taking the square root of bulk modulus and dividing that by our density of the fluid. So once again, we see that the top portion of our fraction is the elastic factor and the bottom portion is our inertia factor. And once again, our velocity of of longitudinal waves depends on the type of medium, the type of fluid that we are using. So once again, if we examine the velocity of any mechanical wave, such as transverse waves and longitudinal waves, we'll see that our velocity only depends on the type of medium that we are using. So, let's look at the following example in which we're going to apply one of these formulas. The process of echolocation is used by animals such as dolphins for sensory perception. The dolphin emits a pulse of sound which is a longitudinal wave which reflects off of objects and returns back to that dolphin. Now suppose the frequency of such a longitudinal wave is 100,000 Hz. In part A, we want to calculate the wavelength of such a wave. So let's begin by drawing our dolphin. Suppose the dolphin emits that pulse. That pulse travels to some object and then returns back. The frequency of our pulse, the frequency of our longitudinal wave is given by this quantity and we're asked to calculate the wavelength. Recall that wavelength multiplied by the frequency is equal to the velocity. So if we solve for our wavelength, we see that we can find the wavelength by taking the velocity and dividing it by the frequency. Notice we're only given the frequency. So if we are to find the wavelength, we have to calculate the velocity. Now, let's suppose that the fluid in which our dolphin is swimming is pure water. So that means we can use the following formula to calculate our velocity inside that fluid. So the velocity of a longitudinal wave inside water is equal to the square root of the bulk modulus of water, which is given by 2 times 10 to the 9 newtons per meter squared, divided by the density, 
which is 1.0 times 10 to the 3 kilograms per meter cubed. So these values can be looked up online or in a textbook. So we divide, take the square root, and we see that the velocity is about 1,400 meters per second. So now we know the velocity and we know the frequency. So we take the velocity divided by the frequency and we get a wavelength of 0.014 meters. So the distance from one crest to the next crest is given by this quantity. So now let's examine part B. Suppose there is another animal 120 meters away from where the dolphin initially emits the pulse. How long does it take the wave to travel back to our dolphin? So we're assuming the dolphin is stationary. The dolphin emits that pulse. There is an object 120 meters away, let's say a second animal, that is also stationary. So what happens is the pulse travels to this other animal, reflects, and travels back. So we want to calculate how long that pulse will travel to this position and back to our dolphin. So this distance is 120 meters. So notice that the pulse has to travel 120 meters this way and 120 meters back. So it travels a total distance of 120 meters. Now we know that time is equal to distance divided by the velocity. So we know what the velocity is from part A. So we simply take our distance divided by our velocity, so 2 times 120 meters divided by our velocity, 1400 meters per second, and we get approximately 0.17 seconds. So it takes the pulse to travel this uh, time period from our dolphin to this object to the animal back to the dolphin. So the dolphin will know after 0.17 seconds that there is a second animal, another object, this distance away.